Hello and welcome to my code coffee. In previous chapter, I introduced the concept of multi-signature and I explained that in the scenario where more than one persons are owner of the fund, like a corporate or business house, multi-signature is extremely useful. I explained that an M of N locking script would look like this and corresponding unlocking script will look like this. But there are practical complexities associated with multi-signature. First problem is the requirement of a special wallet. Because of complex script, if a sender wants to send Bitcoin to this multi-sig account, sender wallet needs a special feature. If your business has a multi-sig account, you will have to communicate this script to all your customers who want to pay you and they need to have that special feature in wallet to process this type of transaction. Second problem is large transaction fee. If a sender wants to send Bitcoin to a multi-sig account, the transaction that will be created will be very large. Why? Because sender will have to bind the output of its transaction to multi-sig address which will be very large. Large transaction means that sender will have to pay large fee because transaction fee depends on the size of the transaction. So in a way you are telling your customer to have a special wallet which have a special features and on top of it you are asking them to pay more transaction fee. Too much of ask to turn off any customer, isn't it? Third problem is memory consumption. Because of the complex script with many public keys, transaction output is large in size, which in turn means high memory consumption because unspent transaction output is often stored in RAM. These issues related to multisig is solved by the use of a powerful transaction called pay to script hash or P2SH. In this met method, this entire multi-signature locking script is represented by a 20-byte cryptographic hash. To get this hash first, SHA-256 algorithm is applied followed by RIPEMD-160 algorithm. If you recall chapter 5, public key is converted to Bitcoin address by exactly same process. So ultimately you get a 20-byte hash. A P2SH transaction locks this hash instead of that entire long script and the locking script looks like this. And as you can see, it is much shorter. In fact, it is no different than a locking script of a single Bitcoin address. Except that here instead of public key hash, we have hash of the script. But for a sender who wants to send the Bitcoin to this script, it is seamless and it is no different from sending Bitcoin to a normal Bitcoin address. So now sender does not need to have any special wallet because locking script has just a 20 byte hash very similar to a Bitcoin address. In fact, this is the reason this hash is also called P2SH address. So this resolves the first issue that we discussed. Remember that though sender does not need to have multi-sig feature in their wallet, the recipient would still need multi-sig feature. But that should not be a problem because recipient is anyway maintaining multi-signature to start with. Also the transaction created by sender will be a normal transaction because this locking script is no different from normal Bitcoin address locking script. So sender will not be paying any extra fee for large transaction. Again here also recipient will still have to create a larger transaction and will have to pay extra transaction fee when they will spend Bitcoins from their multi-sig account. So in this way, burden of extra fees moved from sender to recipient. So this solves issue number two. Now let us see how recipient would spend the Bitcoin from its multi-sig account. The original script which was changed to this hash value is called redeem script. So now this is redeem script and you know that this is a locking script. In P2SH, unlocking script is the combination of digital signature and redeem script. So this is unlocking script. P2SH is a two-step process if you want to spend Bitcoin from multi-sig account. In the first step, redeem script is validated against locking script using stack data structure. Very similar to what we discussed in chapter 13. So let us start our pointer from left. We are on this script. So push it on the stack. Now move to the next element which is hash 160 which means you will convert uh, this element to 160-bit hash using SHA-256 and RIPEMD-160. Next element is hash of the redeem script. So push this element on top of the stack and then move to the pointer to the next element which is equal operator. This operator tests the equality of top two elements on the stack. Obviously these two elements should be equal if redeem script is the same script which was used to get P2SH address. So if the result is true then comes the second step. And in the second step unlocking script is executed on its own. So transaction input would 
contain a digital signature with a redeem script which means you need to have a special wallet to spend bitcoin from multi-sig account and transaction output will be normal transaction output which would lock the bitcoin value to whatever bitcoin address you are transferring the bitcoin also recall that when sender was sending bitcoin to the multi-sig account then also transaction output was just a normal locking transaction output with hash of the script called p2sh address which was similar to the size of normal bitcoin address so in all cases transaction output is always short and it does not need extra memory so this solves third and last problem of memory consumption. When owner of multi-sig account spends Bitcoin from multi-sig account, then transaction input is of course large. But transaction input is stored in blockchain system and not in RAM. So even if the tra transaction input is large, uh, it doesn't contribute anything in the memory consumption. Okay. So as you can see, pay to script hash is a powerful transaction method which solves the complexity of multi-signature. So this is all about pay to script hash. And with this chapter, we have finished the unit of transaction. We will now move to the next unit, which will have chapters related to block and its components. Hope you like this chapter and enjoy my code profit. If you now want to move to the next chapter, you can click on this card. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way. For easy navigation to all chapters, visit mycodecoffee.com. Thank you so much for watching.